So hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's trading spotlight webinar together uh, today. I'm sorry, on Friday, the 21st, 24th of April, 2020. Um, yeah, the, there's one thing uh, which is a little irritating for me right now. Uh, you probably have seen in the chat box. So um, my screen here uh, is is black. So, but you can see uh, the first slide with day trading with Camarilla pivots, right? So if this is the case, uh, at my end, it's not such a such a big problem because I have the uh, presentation open on uh, on another uh, screen. So no problem with that. But still uh it would be a little unfavorable if the screen is black but uh it's not the case so you already said that the video is fine if this should change then please let me know and uh yeah so let's start with today's topic uh, in fact it's um it's an interesting topic uh for me especially um this the main reason for that is so now you can still see me by the way so uh, you can you can also see my 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 face here because now the face is uh just oh yeah yeah there we go um it's a very interesting topic because uh pivot points um have been um have been the first first thing i i um worked with when i started trading um it was uh or it is several years ago um but still it, it is um something i i really well remember uh and i will tell you why um in a few seconds then before um i start with this personal anecdote uh, first of all let's have a look here at today's agenda um, introduction to pivot points. This is uh, the first point we have to to conquer here, and then uh, we will go we'll go one step further and have a look at so-called Camarilla pivot points. So this is the key to this uh, day trading strategy, in fact. Um, and uh, I can already say the the concept behind pivot points in general. If you look at Camarillas, if you look at uh, the classic pivot points, if you look at Fibonacci pivot points, it's all the same. They're all looking for the same. Um, um, uh, they're, they're, they're all the, 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 the uh, theory behind this is the same. It's only the way you calculate them, which uh, differs slightly, in fact. So uh, that's not that much, but still, um, there are some 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 adaptations, um, some observations which were made and uh, over years and over over the time, and uh, so people adapted the calculation. And um, I will show you how camera like pivot points in this case are calculated and um, i will then show you uh, three different camarilla day trading strategies um, one thing is important um, something i have to um, um, uh, remind you um, here is you have to download a camarilla pivot point um, indicator um, from from mql5 uh, in fact it's very simple i can show it to you how, how this is done it's directly imported into your uh, metatrader then um, and uh, so it's very important. It's not a standard indicator. Um, if you look at pivot points, by the way, uh, then you have also um, some difficulties when it comes to MP4, MP5. But there's this Supreme Edition from Admiral Markets where you have a chance to download it and then um, get the pivot points from there directly um, in your MP4, MP5. Um, in terms or in regards to my, my person here, uh, uh, as usual, so that's it's not very spectacular. I I don't really don't like to talk that much about myself. Um, the most interesting thing probably about me is that I'm located in Berlin in Germany, and this is um, uh, yeah, this is this is of interest mainly due to the fact that Admiral Markets, um, so the the broker behind um uh, the webinar series here, Trading Spotlight, and making all this possible, um, has offices around the globe. So they have their headquarters in Estonia. Um, in Tallinn, but still um, are um, in over 20 countries with offices around the globe. And why is this noteworthy? It's not just that um, that's why we can refer to Admiral as a global player in the FX and C of the industry. Uh, by the way, for here, you can see it, 19 years of reliability, in, uh, in fact. So since 2001, if I'm not mistaken. But also, in addition to that, um, it's uh, very important when it comes to financial services in general, right? Because if you reach out to your broker, you probably want to talk to someone in your um, native language. Um, and even though, I mean, we're here in an English webinar, and this is so, not such a such a big issue for, for many um, around the globe, probably, still, sometimes there are questions which arise around your trading um, where you just want to talk to someone in your respective language. So in, in my case, English is not such a busy, big issue, but I know several traders who are not that fluent in English, and then they want to talk in German to their, to their customer support. 
case of Admiral, it's possible because they have an office, for example, here in Berlin in Germany. Um, I can, by the way, in 30 minutes, I, I, I'd be there and, and, and could personally talk to someone. There's also something which is important though. It's not just um, um, a purely um, uh, abstract thing. Uh, it's not just a voice coming out of your, of your screen or of, of, out of your telephone, but it's someone you can really talk to, you can, you can touch him. I think this is important. Um, has been for me over, over the years, and this is one thing which is very, very important, uh, but this is not the, the main reason. So when, uh, or main thing, which, which uh, makes Atmel outstanding here, but it's also the highly competitiveness in, in terms of their offering. When it comes to a DAX trading, for example, um, here in Germany, uh, the main traded asset is usually the DAX. Um, and Admiral has, in my opinion, and I'm not aware of any more competitive offering, one of the most competitive offerings when it comes to conditions, when it comes to DAX trading, especially right now with high volatility where um, order execution, order speed is so, so important. Uh, but in addition to that, it's also true when, for example, looking at the offering Admiral Prime, um, there you have a highly competitive um, FX offering um, in addition to that with very, very tight spreads, which is of high interest for um, short-term traders, scalpers especially, and also um, with very competitive um, conditions in, in regards to commissions, truly multi-asset. You can also go via MT4, I'm sorry, no, MT5. It's only available via MT5, um, MT5 invest via Admiral, um, invest in ETFs, in stocks. So definitely worth a look in my opinion. Um, and so that's it with the introduction uh, uh, to where, yeah, the, the host behind this. And let's now have a look here at the introduction to pivot points and um, start with today's topic. Uh, so first of all, um, pivot points uh, find their uh, roots here um, as in, in, in the days of the old floor traders. Um, and the, the reason for calculating pivot points um, was very simple. They, um, you probably have seen pits um, and where um, uh, there's a, a mass of traders shouting at each other. The thing is, they had no such thing as we have today here, a computer screen with a chart and everything like that. But they just had um, uh, they, they just had their, their, uh, their, their feeling to some extent. So there was no real thing um, in, in, in terms of, of um, do we have a hat shoulder formation for me here or something? So probably you knew that there was kind of a technical pattern occurring in the chart um, given uh, by your um, research you did yourself and analyzed the charts before. But when you uh, were in the pit, you only had the number in mind where you wanted to buy respectively to sell uh, the, the respective asset you were looking at. And um, especially for the short-term traders, intraday traders, um, these pivot points were crucial, in, in fact, because um, that way they had a very quick way to calculate potential support and resistance zones, in fact. So, um, and what's very interesting in this um, um, regard is that the pivot point is calculated based on the pre-daily high, low, and closing price, in fact. So it's um, these three um, input parameters you have here. And um, so the thing is that simply said, uh, if the market trades above the pivot point, the so-called PP, um, then you have um, a bullish sentiment for the trading day. If you trade below, you have a bearish sentiment for the day. And um, in fact, what I found most interesting when I started out trading was that pivot points are quite often intraday turning points. And now let me uh, just um, 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 follow up with this, with this um, um, uh, personal anecdote here in this context. So when I started um, looking at the markets and, and um, become familiar with, um, um, with, with the definitions around it and, and charts and everything, this concept, very simple concept, was fascinating for me, especially when I read several articles on this topic. Um, it came to, to um, uh, yeah, it was, it was quite obvious. I mean, that were perfect examples. So um, to illustrate that they work, but there's also times when they don't work. So it's not the holy grail of trading. Um, please do not misunderstand this. But um, the thing was, back when I started trading, uh, the trading platforms we used um, weren't that sophisticated as uh, they are today. So if you um, download the MetaTrader today, if you go to the website, Atma Markets, if you download the MetaTrader there, MT4, MT5, you nearly have everything available. 
Um, and, and this is, in fact, noteworthy because MT4, MT5 is mainly um, a tool which is especially used from automated um, traders. So it's not um, uh, the most sophisticated discretionary trading station you will get. So there are many, many others out there. I have to admit that I'm a little skeptical about this development, by the way. So just to make things clear, um, for me and my trading, MT4, MT5 is perfectly fine. And in fact, I really appreciate that it's not too complicated. And the reason for that is because if you have too many options available within your trading station, you become sometimes overwhelmed by all the opportunities. And uh, it's also true. I mean, there's... For example, when looking at the uh, Supreme Edition, you can download for free on the website. Um, you can you can um, also have a first, let's call it a small um, connection to FX Blue and a small trading journal within your MT5, MT5 in this case, um, which is beautiful because it, it's, there's an automation now that you document your trading and it, you can you can find ways to analyze your trading everything. But there's one thing with this: if you are new to trading, if you're a pure beginner. Um, it's, in my opinion, probably better to write down your trading manually and not let it um, uh, be um, an automated process, which is done from uh, the, the platform. Um, and, and the reason is because if you write it down manually, that's um, like, at least for me, it is like I live through the trade once again. Um, and there's, again, emotions attached to it. There's feelings attached to it. And that makes it in a, um, a better, in a better way. I have a better, better opportunity to spot flaws in my thinking process and, 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 and find out what worked, what didn't work. Um, and um, I remember one, uh, one, one guy uh, who booked me as a coach and uh, he was, he was, so yeah, he was he was so um, um, emotional sometimes, um, as where he not emotional yes, but um, also in in terms of the trading platform he used, um, it wasn't the MetaTrader, and it, it completely automated everything, and he was so so so. Yeah, so not overwhelmed only, but it was also like he was so um, um, excited about it. He wanted to tell me about all the functions. Every time um, uh, we met and, and, and we had a new lesson, lesson to be learned, um, he was like, well, before we start with something like trading psychology, which is, I think, crucial for long-term success in trading, he was like, oh, wow, this is so great. Look here and look at this function. Look there, look everywhere. Um, and he completely got lost in all the functionalities of the platform um, that, yeah, that he, in, 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 all in all, forgot to really learn um, about what it's about or to, to study what it's about to be a professional and a profitable trader, in fact. So I, I want to say the following. It's not that I'm completely against this technolo technological um, developments and all everything is available, but you have to sometimes really cherry pick. And I think I, um, uh, I became a trader in a time I was happy that some functionalities like um, pivot points were not directly available within your chart, but I had to look them up myself. And that way I studied them in a complete different manner and I worked with them in a complete different manner. I really, I, 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 I had to put work in. It was not just I clicked the mouse and had them in the chart, but I had to uh, really calculate them first and then see whether the levels um, they are displaying make sense or not. And I think this is I think this is this is very very important. But let's come back to the pivot points themselves. So I hadn't the availability uh, within the trading platform back then, and so I had to look them up. And why do I um, get something? Yes, to some extent, I get emotional when when talking about pivot points. Let me just explain this to you. Um, it's it's a it's a great experience I made because I was um, uh, back then also in a, in a forum. I, I read especially only that it was like very passive, and I only uh, tried to absorb, make sense out of the posts from people who uh, posted within this um, a forum here. And um, then one day I was like, it, it really took me a while. And I was like, okay, now I take all I have to ask a question. That might sound ridiculous at first, but um, to me, all the people who were posting there were experts. They were experts. They were just like traders. And I was like, I don't want to waste their time with nothing. Um, and uh, it, that was the moment when I said, okay, now today is the day. And I had only one question. Where do I get a pivot point indicator? Uh, that was the question. Um, and 
the funny thing was that there was one trader who um, was really, really nice, answered my question there. Um, and that was such a beautiful experience to, to, to see this helpfulness within this community in a, yeah, in such an abstract world that, that it, um, it, yeah, it makes me sometimes, um, um, yeah, it makes, makes me smile. When I think about pivot points, this is what I connect with pivot points. And that's why, why I really like to talk about pivot points in general. Uh, so just to give you an idea, that's by the way, also one opportunity we have now to um, uh, um, remind you, there's a trading spotlight community. And um, why I really like this um, uh, community is because this experience back then is one of the reasons why I'm um, always keen to answer all your questions you have. It's not just me, by the way. There's also Paul, um, who's giving the webinars on Monday. There's also Marcus giving the webinars on Wednesday. Um, and we are all within this community. So please feel free, Trading Spotlight community, um, to ask your questions. If you have any, um, if you have questions about your um, uh, trading setups, whatever, just ask them there. And this is what this community is there for, in fact. So that's a quite long introduction to the topic of pivot points. Um, but probably this is, um, yeah, giving giving the whole thing, um, let's say, something, a personal, a personal touch, in fact. So what we have here is the example of pivot points in the chart, in fact. So um, what you can see is, uh, this is the, the um, um, MT5 SE is Supreme Edition add-on I use here. And um, so you can display it then within your chart and it's calculated. It's um, calculated on the input parameters, in fact. And we will especially look here at Camarilla people. So we don't want to look at um, how pivot points are cal calculated even though the formula is not that complicated, but um, we don't want to waste time now with all the calculation and everything. But this is something today you can, uh, with one click, get these within your chart. And what I found especially interesting was uh, that the market is really, yeah, it's accepting, accepting these lines. Um, sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. It, but it um, most of the time it does. It's it's a very interesting um, um, thing. I, I I recognized already back then, um, and uh, so the thing is here we have a um, a five minute DAX chart in this case. So what we have is here um, the green line. This is the PP I was talking about. This is the pivot point, and R one R two respectively S one S two S three. R and S is obviously for resistance on the upside and support on the downside. And as you can see here, so these lines, um, when I when I uh, made the screenshot, um, that's already one month ago, but it doesn't really matter. Um, the the, the uh, lines, the pivot levels here were calculated based on the open high, low close of the day before. Um, and uh, so when you now display them in the chart, what you can interestingly see is that the market obviously here, for whatever reason, I don't really remember, but I think it was March. So there must have been a reason why uh, the market yeah, kept lower. That was during the high volatility environment one month ago. Um, but what's very interesting, it was highly volatile. Um, yes, we had a bearish tendency, uh, which also, also here um, established them during during um, uh, the, the European market opening hours, in fact. But what's very interesting, in fact, is that we open here below the PP, which gives the whole picture a bearish touch. And then the market drifts lower and finds, interestingly enough here, support at S2. So it, it for whatever reason, respected this line of support. So um, why can this be helpful, even if you do not use them to generate trading signals, it can be very useful to use these pivot points um, to draw lines of potential support and resistance, which are in fact, most of the time are accepted by the market and use them, for example, to calculate in your traded approach, risk reward ratios, for example. Um, so if, you, if you're trading, let's say, somewhere here in this region, um, slightly above S2, and now your, your setup generates a short signal whatever setup it might be, um, you're probably not that motiv motivated, not the wrong word, but you're probably a little more careful. You probably consider reducing the position size here because you find solid support, potential solid support. You don't know when, when the trading signal is generated, whether the market will really stop here or just break through. But it's most of the time, at least, not unusual that the market at least finds short-term support here in this region. The same is true on the upside. And that's a beautiful way to use pivot points because it makes 
for especially in my opinion for um beginners it makes it very very easy to draw support and resistance zones into your chart and they are not just lines you draw in but they are based on input parameters which make sense and also bigger players and the market look at that's the open high low close it's not formations or something like that um any patterns probably some of them play a more or a higher um, have a higher importance than others but all in all um the most interesting and the most important um levels you can watch uh, on an intraday basis especially is the open high low close and pivot points are calculated based on that and that's why it makes definitely sense to give them a deeper look by the way just one second please i i just received a question here Yeah, I think this is a good way to start. <laughs> Adam just asked here, I'm new who doesn't have any idea on how to enter start trading. Please, is there any video to train me on how to do trading? I registered on demo camp, but still I don't really know how to do, uh, in this case, Forex trading. I think, uh, yeah, the Trading Spotlight webinar series is probably a very good way to start. Um, in, 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 in general, I, I highly recommend looking at um, all the recorded videos. So this one is recorded, will be published on YouTube, but there's also plenty of other webinars. Also introduction, um, platform, how it works, um, indicators, how to draw them within in the chart. Um, so I highly recommend looking at the YouTube video uh, channel from Admiral Markets. And also in addition to that, feel free to ask, I guess, as I already said, the questions um, in, in regards to trading in our uh, Spotlight community. So I think this is a, a quite um, uh, a good way to start. And so by the way, here, you can see it now. Um, I have, I have uh, drawn it into the chart. And uh, so what, what's then the first, the first um, resistance which can be found? It's the from S2, S1, for example, and the market reacts there. If we hold, held this level, um, I haven't, haven't looked it up, to be honest. I, I don't know, I, I haven't followed the price action, but it's like you, you see the market reacting at these levels, at least short term. And this is some um, of interest for intraday traders, as been, um, especially. So now let's have a look here at Camarilla pivot points. And um, uh, there's a short introduction. So while in classic pivots, uh, crucial pivot levels are resistance one or R1 and support one S1 in Camarilla pivot points, S3, S4, R3 and R4 are of high importance. Um, so it, it's not just the calculation, but it's also the a question whether these levels uh, play an important role within the trading or not. And um, now I have it here. Let me just go through, or yeah, bring, bring up um, R1 to R4. Um, so what we in fact do here, and, and this is also how, how dif um, differentiations could um, um, occur, in fact. So it depends on what closing price do you use. So um, for example, there might be traders when looking at the DAX, let's say. Um, we have the DAX uh, where the spot market is open, Xetra, we call it, um, is open between 9 a.m. German time. So it's 7 a.m. currently. It's um, 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 since we are here at uh, CEST, so summertime. Um, so 7 a.m. GMT. And then it closes at 5.30 German time, which means 3.30 GMT. So this is the current trading hours, which could be used when looking here at the closing price in this case. So using seven at 5.30, respectively 3.30 GMT. Um, if you look at the future, so this is when you look at Citra, um, uh, um, uh, the, the, the spot DAX, let's call it. Um, if you look at the future price, then it might differ. It might, um, I'm here, the, might be the closing price um, of the future, which is at two, uh, at, at 10 p.m. German time, respectively uh, 8 p.m. GMT, for example. So this is where uh, differentiations could come into play, which could be um, you use the Xetra DAX pivots while, or Camarilla pivots in this case, while I, I use, for example, the future DAX pivots. But most of the time, this is where the reason for this comes from, respectively, especially, which is not often happening if I'm, if I'm, um, it's a ruffling, roughly speaking, I have no proof of that, but I would also say high and lows are not necessarily made um, within or before Xetra opens respectively, uh, Xetra closes then and after, and the after hours of trading. Um, well, it's still, and sometimes it happens, depends a little on the on US market action, however. So um, this is how you calculate them. So you use the closing price, then you take the um, a difference between the high and the low, and then you multiply it by 1.5, 
respectively 1.25, respectively 1. One six, one second, one one seven, one six, and I think so. Um, and then you here have one twelfth, in fact. So uh, this is how you calculate them. So this is the the, the multiplier to get R one to R four, in fact. The same is true when looking at uh, the support levels. Again, um, I myself, I made the experience um, of calculate these levels for myself, and not only that, but I had to calculate them plus I had to draw them manually into my chart which took me some time. Um, um, today, everything's easier. Again, we will see um, I'm an example here at the, uh, um, in the following, in fact. So you, you can calculate them automatically and then they will be drawn to your chart. But just to get an idea of what input parameters do we have here? So why, why, how, how are they calculated? I think that makes, to some extent, makes sense. And um, this is how you get these lines. So to have a better, yeah, also there's a, certain level of trust you might be um you might get um once you know what's the calculation behind the scenes here in fact and um so now uh we will look at three different um camarilla strategies so in fact um the the whole topic intraday trading strategy sounds sounds so exciting but all in all it's a very simple approach in fact but highly effective one so you're not in a in a vacuum anymore let's say so once you once you start trading for example sometimes it's so abstract and, and you don't really know what to to look at and everything and and is this setup really profitable and everything certainly you have to prove yourself that this works for you not just personally and if it corresponds well with your own trading personality with your um, um and, and then also in addition to that you have to find out what is the position size which fits your personal level of risk you're willing to take but in addition to that it also depends on uh, which markets are you trading. So you have to run a backtest yourself. Sometimes it makes sense to automate um, a strategy and then use good data to run and see whether the approach works or not. Um, this is one thing which is very positive about especially such yeah, simple strategies um, because the simple strategies are... If you have some coding knowledge, there you can easily sometimes um, um, bring them uh, into into um, a coding format here, um, not just in, in M MQL4, MQL5, but also in um, coding languages like like Python, for example. You can code it, and then you can run it with a um, solid data set and see whether it worked over a certain period of time. Um, that's why I highly appreciate this because I think what 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 um, uh, where where this well, why. KISS strategies, you probably keep it simple, stupid. You probably have heard about this. Why they work so well, it's not necessarily because they are so advanced and so um, um, highly thought out or something like that, but it's mainly due to you working, corresponding well with them because you can trust them because it was already visualized that it worked over a certain period of time. And this gives your um, a trading, a, a complete new level because you trust the strategy. And that's why you can even during a period of the, um, 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 a drawdown can, 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 can continue trading the strategy. In fact, this is one of the probably key reasons why, um, why many traders fail because there's this so-called system hopping. So um, if I have a strategy, which I do not know whether it works or not because I have never ever uh, run a back test, um, on the strategy, um, on, on, on a MetaTrader 4, MetaTrader 5. Um, well, the thing is, if there is, let's say, four or five trades in a row which do not work out well and, and generate a losing trade or a losing series, a losing streak, well, it's very likely that I will just say, well, the system does not work and I, I, I just uh, skip it and, and work with another uh, strategy. And this is one of the key reasons, I think, for the unprofitability um, of many beginners, especially, um, doing this system hopping, in fact. Uh, but no, let's come back to the three different Camarilla strategies. So scenario one, what we do is we look at an open price, which is between R3 and S3 in this case. Um, and then we have a long setup we wait for a drop below R3, okay? So the market has to drop below that. And once it crosses back and closes above R3, we have a buy signal. And uh, what we do with our stop is we place our stop at um, S4 with a target, first target at R1, R2, target two, and then target three at R3. This is in fact the setup, um, not more, not less in fact. And the short setup works the other way around in this case. So what does it mean? It means the short setup is given 
um, with the open price between R3 and S3. Then we wait for a push above S3. Okay, we just we just um, 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 use use uh, the the opposite here in this case. Um, so we wait for a push above S3, um, and once we close back below S3, we have a sell signal. And then we have um, our stop placed at R4 in this case. And then we have our target one at S1, target two at S2, and target three at S3. So this is how you could um, imagine that then to work out for the short side. And now I did something, um, and in fact, I had some, uh, um, uh, I was a little skeptical whether it works or not, because sometimes um, system stability, let's call it, is a little, or the resources I use here is a little uh, difficult to, to run a MetaTrader um, in the background, but so far it worked out quite well. And uh, I think it makes definitely sense here to now um, uh, have a look here at the, at the um, example for today. The only problem I have here is in fact that it's not R3, but it's um, H in this case. So we are looking at H3 in this case and not R3. Um, but let's have a look now at uh, the Camarilla pivot. First of all, again, you have to download it yourself. So you have then in the indicators top in your MT5, you have here such a market um, um, a top and there you can see it's the MT5 Camarilla pivots. Where do you get them from? How is it um, directly imported into your MetaTrader? It's very simple. You go to the market top here and there you can already see it. There you have, let me just see, um, I go back. So there you have here um, your balance. So you can also deposit money there. There's also some indicators you can buy. Um, Camarilla, the, the MT5 Camarilla pivot point indicator is for free. So you don't need to deposit any money here. And then you just type in Camarilla here. Um, and what you will see is all indicators, all pivot point indicators, which are all offered here. Um, and which you can download. So the, the calculation should be very, very similar, um, but I use the most obvious one, which is Camarilla Pivots in this case. And um, once you download them, um, you, can, you can easily, as usual, uh, draw them or dra and drag and drop them directly to the chart. And then it's um, um, displayed here, uh, given the, the input parameter. So uh, you can also choose which closing price you want to use. For example, I, I just took the standard application here in this case. So if you, if you double click, you can see it here. Um, it's the starting time at 5 p.m., which means here it's 4 p.m. in this case, uh, German time. So, uh, but it's just for illustration purposes. So just to give you an idea um, how, this, how this works, in fact. Um, and uh, so once you click OK, you get, get them displayed here. And now let's go through the uh, scenario once again. So what we have to make sure is that the um, opening price of um, EURUSD here in this case, and the opening price was here in this, in this region, is between H3 in this case, so R3, our R3 in the um, presentation. In this case, it's the H3 and S3. So obviously, this is given. Um, let me just... Let me just have a look here, insert, and then I want to have some objects and I want to use with, I want to work with here, the ellipse. So, does it work? I hope so. Oh, that's not so good. No, one second. Let me just, let me just, I want to make sure that you can spot it. Let me do that. I think purple is probably fine, right? So, there we go. Um, so there we go. So, okay, so here was the opening price, okay? There we have H3, there we have S3. So in fact, our S3 from the presentation is an L3 here. So it's for the low, while the H is obviously for a high. And uh, we, yeah, we opened within, perfect. So now we wait for a drop below R3, which is obviously given here. So market drop below R3, okay? Um, and then what we what we do is we wait for a cross back above R3, which happened here. So that's where the long signal was generated. And in fact, it's an um, it's a trade which was just um, um, uh, open. So here you have the close above this H3 in this case. So which means you're having a long signal there, and um, we place now our stop as, as um, said here below the daily low in this case, it's um, the L4 in, in fact. So this is where we place our stop. And then what we do is uh, we have a take profit level, which is given here at this level, here at this level. So you can see it here. It's, um, 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 we can all, 
R1, R2, R3. Um, and this is this is where we where we get our um, yeah, this is where we where we get our signal from. In fact, that's the setup. That's all all what, what is what is needed to say here in this in this context. Um, now the thing is that we could also adapt the strategy. So for example, um, depending on market conditions, you have three setups. That's why we, we, we formulate three setups here um, or three scenarios, which, which are of use then for you. Um, so what we have here is for example, in this scenario, it's the open price between R3 and R4. And uh, we wait for a break above R4. And if we close above R4, we have our signal generated with a stop at R3 in fact. So it's if you want, um, it's like uh, in, in, in the first scenario, we can talk about a trend, um, um, intraday trend um, um, format or, or setup, which we, which we trade. While here, when working with a tighter stop, it's more like um, in, to, to transport it in the, in the um, um, language of, of um, um, trend moment or momentum breakout trading, respectively range trading. We have an approach which is uh, more like a momentum approach, in fact. And then we wait for a break above R3, um, uh, no, R4. We have our buy signal with a stop, which is tighter and below R3 with our first target at R5 and then R6. So in fact, when, when looking at the current market conditions, the signal would be generated. Um, yeah, in fact, it's not generated because we, we, we didn't open here between those three. Just, just let's imagine we open between these three, um, H3 and H4, once we opened here, uh, what we do, do is, in fact, we would wait for a break above H4 to happen with a stop here placed below um, H3 in this case and have our take profit at H5. And I think H6 is not displayed. So I, I haven't displayed it yet. Uh, uh, I haven't, I haven't um, um, uh, displayed it, in fact. But um, you could also display it here and, uh, and then, yeah, and then um, have your, have your um, um, target shown in the chart, R6. Respectively, short setup, again, it's the opposite. In fact, we wait for a break below R3 in this case. Still, it's, it's not we're working with S3, but it's like you, you, you see some, you expect some selling pressure to come into the market then and momentum building on the downside. So we have a break below R3. If we close below, we sell with a stop above R4. And then we have our target at S1, S2, and S3, in fact. So, and... Uh, now we do the opposite. In fact, we have the open price between S3 and S4 in this case, and we have the long setup. If we break back above S3 uh, with our stop, so we have the buy once we close above S3 with our buy, then we have a stop below S4. And then we have our target at R1, R2, and R3. So that's like uh, you, 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 um, to some extent, you, you look at the price section before um, um, uh, the start of the trading day and you see some, some down move, movement here, which um, means you have some extension on the downside. Um, and once you, you have the open price of the currency pair, in this case, EURUSD between S3 and S4, um, what you expect is a sharper bounce to happen. Uh, and this is exactly what you're, what you're trading here in this environment, while the short setup the continuation of the trend on the downside is given um, with the break below S4. And if we close below, uh, then we sell. While we place our stop above S3, so this is the opposite um, setup from the uh, scenario two, in fact, from the long side. Um, and then we have our target at S5, respectively S6 given. And yeah, this is in fact a first step, a first step to formulate a basic strategy the more experience you gain in your uh, trading, probably the more you will do make adaptations um, here and uh, see what works best for you. In fact, so probably these are three scenarios. You can what you can look at all of them, but the thing is that you probably um, um, say, you know, this is more my personality, and that's one of the reasons why I favor, for example, scenario two or scenario. Um, um, a three in this case, depending on what 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 setup you you want to look at. In fact, 
Um, and uh, the great thing about Camerulus is that it's um, uh, based on input parameters, which are given from the day before. So it's, it's, it's not some um, formation you have to, to um, um, draw into the chart yourself or something and really wonder whether this is, um, um, yeah, whether this is, this is seen also from other market participants. But what you're using here is um, input data, which is generated and looked at from other market partici participants for sure. Opening high low price um, of, of uh, the respective day, respectively day before, and then use this to formulate your trading setup. So let's sum this up. Uh, so Camarilla points are easy and automatically calculated each day, as I already pointed out. Um, and they help to identify potential support and resistance zone indicator can be downloaded in the uh, marketplace let's call it from mt5 without any big problems and they help determine the intradent trend bias which means uh again if we trade above we have um we have a long bias for the day if we trade below we have a short bias for the day and um in fact they especially for for beginners but i think also um after some uh, adventures in the market i myself I, I really appreciate the um, a simpleness of this of this um, um, way to formulate uh, support and resistance lines and use them in my trading um, because they are they are easily calculated and they provide really clear um, entry and exit points you can work with, which is especially true for intraday trading, which is especially true for traders who have a higher trading frequency, which means they probably don't have so much time to draw lines in the chart or something like that. And sometimes the, the pattern itself changes over, over the day, respectively. Price action delivers, delivers a complete different picture the next day. And, and pivot points in this case are a very simple, easy, quick way to determine not just the trend, the potential bias for the day, even though in a very rough way, but still, I think it's effective. And also to provide clear support and resistance line you can, you can, you can well work with. And um, so now let's have a look at the Monday and the webinar we have there with uh, Paul then. And he will uh, look at uh, oil, currently the probably most interesting market with negative prices at Monday. Probably have seen the price action. And he will uh, give you an idea on um, how to profitably trade oil, in fact. And not necessarily given the negative prices, but um, uh, with another approach. So with different types of oil instruments, most likely we'll look here at WTI crude oil and, and Brent, for example. And then he wants or will answer questions like what a trader needs to be aware of uh, be, before trading oil, especially important right now, right? Um, um, obviously, and how to posi best position yourself to succeed in oil trading and also give you tactics on how to trade oil successfully. Same time Monday, so 2 p.m. London, 27th of April. Check your inbox for the webinar link if you're live here within the webinar or um, uh, if you watch this on, on YouTube, uh, then you can head over to admiralmarkets.com. There's an education tab in the header of the website, and there you have the webinars. And there, under the webinars tab, you find uh, the Trading Spotlight webinar, which is an ongoing webinar series, by the way. So if you're just at once, then you get the inbox uh, um, link, webinar link to the inbox um, every time such an event takes place. And um, have have fun on the website, amramarkets.com. Um, here are the contact details for any questions relating the Supreme Edition, especially MetaTrader 4 or MetaTrader 5. And uh, here, the risk disclaimer. So have a nice weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, talk to you again next week on uh, Friday. In my case, respectively, on Monday, Wednesday, with Paul, respectively, Marcus. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I uh, look forward to your posts and answer, uh, questions, especially in the trading spotlight community. Have a nice, have a nice weekend. See you and bye bye.